is up guys, welcome back to week number six of Project Plunge. Before we get into this week's episode, I just want to say a quick shout out to the sponsors of this program. The first being Ardor, who make this beautiful hoodie that I'm wearing, and Oxalum, who make the multivitamin that I take every day. Uh, links down below if you want to check them out, as well as a discount code for Ardor. Before we get into this week's episode, I just want to say a quick thank you to everyone who's been commenting, liking and sharing um, and interacting with this series. I've had a lot of fun making it, it's been really interesting to see where the results will come out in week number eight. Um, but I just want to say thank you for being a part of it and joining in. Uh, and if you want to get more involved or keep up to date and be more interactive with me, then follow me over at Instagram at Movement Tom. Um, I always reply to people over there if you want to drop me an instant message. Uh, and I just generally post whatever I'm up to, whatever I'm training, uh, and a little bit more up to date than these videos. Week number six it is all about overloading just before we take our deload and then test our skills. So, this is the third overload week of this program, and possibly the last chance we have to really blast our muscles and hit hard. So, this is a good opportunity to really sort of bust your balls this week and push for those harder progressions. So the theme that I've used this week has been band assisted. So by that I mean we're going to be using a rubber resistance band, such as one of these maybe, or the fully looped versions and you can just hang them around a bar, you can sling them in all sorts of different ways. I've tried to show you some good examples in this week of exercises you can do with the band. They are very useful. It is great for overloading different muscular patterns because it's like doing the same movement but you are 10, 20 kilos lighter depending on what resistance band you choose. Um, so it's a really good way of progressing, really good way of learning different neuromuscular patterns like handstand press-ups, planche push-ups, all of that sort of good stuff. So that's enough of me rambling on. Let's jump straight into our straight arm day and we can see how to apply some of these band assisted exercises. So as we talked about utilizing the band assisted exercises here, this is actually one of the first few times I've used these particular plant band assisted leans. Um, it's quite a weird one to get used to, trying to work out where your body is. Uh, I included a few sets uh, in this particular exercise just to, just to demonstrate my progression for it. As you can see there, my bum is a bit too high. Um, my lean is really far forward because I was a bit too far away, so like the band was pulling me back, which meant I had to lean more. Um, so I think I actually finally just about got it right on this last particular progression here. I was more under the bar um, and I could focus more on having a good lean and being a bit flatter. But it is a really, really great exercise for overloading that neuromuscular pattern. Uh, and the same for this front lever. I've used this a few times and I really do like it. It's great for building up those front lever holds because you still are required to maintain that body tension but you can just hold that hold that little bit longer so you can kind of work it more into your memory. Uh, and just another angle here for you guys, just see how you clip it underneath the feet. Um, and it actually is a, quite significantly easier. So the band that you'll probably use with the front lever should be a little bit lighter than your planche, but obviously it will depend on your ability. Uh, and then that was pretty much it for the band assisted stuff for this exercise. Uh, because it was an overload week, I decided to include some eccentrics in there for this B1 exercise. So I was doing the straddle handstand press and then I was doing a nice, slow and controlled stolder press eccentric into that bottom position. And then overloading for the L-sit, I was using this V-sit progression as it allows you to um, work a little bit of a harder move for those back muscles although it's not quite as strenuous on your hip flexors so to make up for that i used a little bit of a different exercise and um, just with these standing front leg raise holds um, this is actually quite a hard exercise and is a great test of active flexibility as well as hip flexor strength so uh, i think this is an exercise that i'm actually going to start including more because i really want to improve my hip flexor strength as that will definitely help for my v-sit uh, as well as my core compression for other exercises as well. So this is definitely one to include and also a little bit of balance as well. 
Then moving into some elevated bridge holds. Uh, today, it was just busy where I usually do it, so I ended up doing it against the wall. Um, and I kind of didn't go into the full, I was just kind of pushing against the wall, trying to push my shoulders, push my head through. Um, it's still feeling good. Definitely probably one of my most improved aspects. And then into some skin the cats. Uh, this one I went for a little bit less reps and went for a slightly longer hold at the bottom between sort of five and ten seconds on each rep and then just doing less of them because that is what I'm doing these skin the cats for. I'm doing it for that German hang position uh, for that active shoulder stretch. And then moving on to the usual front spit mobility. Uh, nothing really changes here too much. We're just going for the usual um, kneeling bridge quad stretch or natural leg extensions. Uh, this is actually quite a tough leg exercise as well as being an active flexibility hold. As always guys remember to stay even when you're in this bottom position here, tense your glutes, tense your hamstrings, really open up your hips to get the most out of this exercise. And then into these pulsing hamstring stretches. Last week was the first week where we managed to get straight elbow to toe at the beginning of the first set. Uh, so I started moving on some more advanced variations. Now here we're skipping out the elbow altogether and we're going straight for the head to toe. So I am currently at about a fist and four fingers, a fist and three fingers away from my head to toe. Um, a fist and a thumb on a good day, but I think I was a little bit tight today. So. Uh, I was about a fist and four fingers as I said. Uh, if you want to learn more about this technique then in the description down below there is a link to Emmett Lewis. He has a great set of videos on loaded stretching and achieving head to toe as well. Then for the front split section of this little circuit, uh, I'm utilising some active front split holds that was mentioned by Chris Scott in a previous video. Uh, these are actually really really great although I have found I'm not quite strong enough to hold it independently so I've been using a ledge in front of my front foot and that allows me to get a little bit lower as it gives you a little bit of support um, but you still get the benefit of that active flexibility. If your front splits are a bit stagnant and they haven't been improving then definitely consider imp including this exercise. Um, you don't have to go as low as I'm going here, you can definitely go a lot higher and still get the benefit from it. Next we're moving on to our dynamic day and uh, I just thought I'd throw that in there, that was a little attempt at a straddle planche. It had just been really nice to be able to hold that for like, you know, 10 seconds or something. Uh, looked pretty awesome. Maybe one day. So the dynamic version of this band assisted planche, ex planche exercise, are we doing, we're doing extension. So rather than holding a single position for an extended period of time, we're working from the tuck and then trying to extend out into that advanced tuck, that kind of flat straddle position. And then the same kind of applies for the front lever. Uh, I'm doing ice cream makers, which is an exercise I've done before, but I'm using the band to allow me to hold that front lever position just for a second uh, and just stay in more control and really minimize the swing that's going on in this exercise. There really isn't a lot of swing compared to how I do it if I'm just using my body weight. Then moving on to ring dips. Um, if you want here, you can kind of get two ends of a band and then put it between your rings and then you can sit your knees in it and then that would give you kind of an assisted ring muscle up and then you could probably perform sort of 10 or so reps just with your knees and um, support on the bands. It's gonna take sort of 20 kilos off your body weight and that's a really good way of progressing the muscle up and allowing you to just work through that transition from pull up to put dip, which is definitely the hardest part of ring muscle ups. So that's another good progression there. I'll put a link down to a video demonstrating that in the description down below. Then on to some more Edo portal bridge rotations and I'm doing it with the QDR exit again. This is really just a fun exercise and a really good test of um, shoulder mobility. It isn't super bridge focused, but it just has so many cool aspects in it uh, that I'm just enjoying throwing it in. And it does look pretty cool now I'm getting a little bit more fluid with it and a little bit less kind of like um, like I'm just falling about. <laughs> uh, but I'm happy with my progression. I think after this program, I'm definitely going to start exploring a bit more of some Edo Portal movement. And obviously I'll be sharing it on this YouTube channel 
uh, everything I do find and discover. Then instead of doing some hangs, we're kind of combine, combining the two uh, with these single arm scapular raises. Now these are a good little exercise for improving your or working up to a one arm chin up as it often tends to be the weakest part of people's movement for a one arm chin up. So just kind of working five to uh, eight reps in this scapular position. And then it's also still going to contribute to about a 30 to 40 second hang as well. So it's a nice way to just to not be passive in a hang and try and be somewhat active. Keep that scapula engaged as it is a very, very important muscle for body weight movement. Then we're going to jump into the middle split routine. And following on from last week where we started experimenting with just using the holds rather than the reps, um, I decided to do the same thing except I'm going to use a wall to assist me. Uh, and then this allowed me to uh, focus more on the stretch kind of aspect of it itself and retensing my glutes rather than holding myself up. And then I also combined it with um, some shoulder mobility by grabbing a bar and sticking my hands overhead. So we're kind of doing a one-two combo here. I'll show you another angle now of the horse squat, the middle split mobility, as well as the shoulder mobility. So you're having to pin your arms against the wall, that's working your rear delts, uh, and muscles associated with your handstand, as well as hold your legs in that open position, which is going to be working them for the middle splits. Then, an another new exercise that we mentioned last week are these straddle get ups. Uh, now, Carlton did actually comment in the previous video about saying uh, using a corner of a box, which um, I didn't, uh, I hadn't read before recording this episode, so I think that's something I'm going to include next time so you don't have to bend your legs on the way down. Um, but this exercise is really, really good. Uh, I think it's a lot better than just doing a static hold uh, and then kind of combining doing five or ten reps and then leaving a static hold at the end. Um, I think my middle splits is getting better, but we're going to have to wait till the final episode to see how big the improvement is. And then again, working these kind of over the head pancake stretch, um, pancake reps. Uh, I don't know why I've been using this exercise a lot lately. I kind of like it because just like the horse squat, you're kind of getting a two in one. So you're having a nice active stretch on your shoulders as well as in that pancake position. Um, to be honest, I don't feel like the pancake is something I need to work on too much. It definitely can be improved, but um, I'm just actually happy with my positioning here. What's up guys? Hopefully the camera isn't too shaky. Just wanted to quickly mention the importance of active recovery days. So I know this isn't particularly a training focused clip, but it's important to say, uh, and walking is probably one of the most restorative exercises you can do. It's just so good for you. Just get outside, you can get in nature. So I work five minutes from the beach, so it's lunchtime. I'm just going for a walk on the beach. Uh, if you live in the city, go to a park or in the countryside, anywhere you can, just get outside, get in the sun and just walk. So, so good for you. So this is what I'm doing on my passive active recovery day. Um, so we're gonna chill on the beach and I'll catch up with you guys tomorrow, the next training day. So I was traveling on this bent arm day and I'm at a pretty cool ghetto gym in Loughborough called Jim, that's spelled J-I-M. Uh, link in the description if you are around the area it is a pretty rad gym, loads of cool functional training stuff. So it's also a pretty awesome gym to film at because everything looks pretty cool, especially those blue lights in the background. So kicking off this bent arm day, we're working handstand push-ups. Uh, and I'm just going for max effort here. I was just working through the movement, aiming to go for a nice controlled eccentric, and then just if I could get the rep, I'd go for the rep. Then we are using some band-assisted one-arm chin-ups. Now this is slightly different to a mantle chin-up because the level of assistance you get varies depending on where you are in the movement. So at the bottom, you don't get much, but at the top, you definitely get a little bit more. So it's kind of an interesting one. Um, makes it a bit different. Uh, and also, I think it's good at working on weak points. Um, so definitely a little bit of a mix up in terms of exercise. Not quite the same as just doing a mantle chin up. 
um, because you just got that variance of the band. And as you can see, the guys to the right of me doing these handstand sort of um, bounces, they're also a really cool exercise I might detail in a future video. Then onto the pseudo planche push ups. Now, I've had been corrected in previous videos uh, of my form on this particular exercise and how I don't maintain a hollow body throughout. So that's what I was really focusing on during this set here. Hopefully you can see my form's improved. I'm maintaining that scapular engagement, that hollow body throughout the movement. My shoulders are not sagging at all. Uh, and I'm also maintaining that forward lean. It does make the exercise a hell of a lot harder. Like I was struggling to get five or six reps, but I think the benefit that you'll get from maintaining that good form is just gonna pay off in the long run. So uh, definitely, if you have a camera, film your form and check it off because I didn't really realize I was doing this until somebody pointed it out. And then swapping over to the front lever rows. Now this is a pretty standard exercise um, and something that I felt has actually improved quite a lot. I remember at the beginning of the set series, I was struggling to get five or six reps, um, whereas now I'm kind of easily repping out eight reps. So it's definitely improved. Um, obviously still a long way to go. One day we'll have those full front lever pull-ups. And then onto the shoulder mobility aspect and we're working through some bridge push-ups in the functional area of this gym. Uh, my shoulder mobility is something that I'm so pleased with the improvement. I can remember I couldn't even get into a somewhat decent bridge. I couldn't even straighten my arms. Um, not much longer before this program so the difference now is pretty incredible um, definitely definitely super happy with my improvement and then I have been having a bit of an imbalance in my tr sort of push and pulling strength so I'm trying to include a bit more tricep um, and pushing work so these tricep extensions uh, are found to be one of the better exercises as well as the overhead with the rings um, I just like these particularly at the moment because I'm working on a little bit of golfer's elbow that I have and that's really helping to fix that. What is up you guys? So it is day number six of week number six. Uh, <laughs> I was traveling this weekend so I had a bad sleep, didn't get a chance to train legs at the weekend so it's now a Monday so I'm at work uh, and I thought I'd make the most of a nice day and come down here to the beach and come for a leg session so I'm going to do some beach sprints and then the body weight circuit and that should be good and then maybe a swim in the sea it is February it is pretty cold so we'll see all right so you get on to the workout so just showing you through a little bit of a quick warm-up that I'm doing here I just like to mention that the beauty of doing body weight exercise is that you can do it outside and in summer especially I pretty much exclusively work out outside. Um, it is still February here in England so it is pretty cold but when it's sun is shining it's nice to just get out get moving especially when I work so close to the beach. So in today's episode I didn't really feel like doing anything major, I didn't feel like doing sprints in the sand as I said it was cold. Um, so I just didn't think it was worth it. Instead, I decided to do the circuit but uh, that I usually do, but I was doing it for four, maybe five rounds instead of the usual three, two to three rounds. So I was just basically including more volume with that circuit rather than doing some sprints and some other bits and bobs. So that was how I increased the volume um, and the intensity of this workout. But as I mentioned guys, it is important to get outside, get in the sun, um, that is the beauty of doing a bodyweight workout, you don't really have that reliance on the gym, especially this leg workout, that is one of the reasons I designed it the way that I did, um, is the sort of leg workout that you can actually just go and perform anywhere. Uh, even the first two exercises, the more intense ones like box jumps, uh, natural hamstring curls, you can still perform those, I could perform them at the beach today if I wanted to, but um, I just felt that it was too cold and I didn't feel like doing it, but it doesn't mean you can't. And that is kind of the cool thing about bodyweight training um, is that you can just get outside and get moving, you know, which is what it's all about. You shouldn't be restricted by the gym. Anyway, sorry for the rant. We've just gone through some pistol, uh, some shrimp squats, which is an Edo portal um, squat. Then we did some glute 
um, ham bridges. I've been corrected that the razors are more like the natural hamstring curls. And then we're hopping into these Cossack squats for one of our two minute bloody sets, um, going backwards and forwards, again for the active mobility aspect of it. And then we're gonna head straight on into some straight leg, single leg deadlifts. Um, I apologize for the camera angle here. For some reason I can't aim a camera at the ground. Um, but you get the idea, I've seen this exercise done loads of times. I didn't have any weight with me today, but it didn't really matter. I just ended up doing a few more reps than usual to get the benefit out of it. As I mentioned in the little bit of um, sort of vlog at the beginning of this uh, leg day, I did also go for a swim afterwards in the sea. So the sea temperature at the moment in the UK is about 8 degrees and because of water is water, um, that means it feels like minus two. So it was pretty freaking cold. Um, I actually managed to go in for about four or five minutes, which is not a bad amount of time. It's enough to get the benefits from it. The reason I was standing on the edge there is because I was using the Wim Hof um, fire breathing method. So uh, I'll link that in the description down below, but it's basically uh, a method of breathing where you over oxygenate your body so your blood vessels open up and this basically kind of warms up your body in a really natural way um, and it's great for preparing you to do some cold water exposure anything like that um, like a dip in the sea in February which is the coldest it is in England uh, and then I didn't actually really go for a swim as such in this particular um, video I just kind of dunked myself and then did some box breathing some controlled breathing uh, and just got cold uh, there's lots of benefits to cold thermogenesis like increased testosterone levels, decreased inflammation levels um, and just generally being awesome for you as well as working your brown fat. Uh, I'll put some resources in the description down below if you want to read more about cold thermogenesis. I think at some point I will make a video on it. But that's been it for this week, um, I'll leave you with an outro message. So this week has been pretty intense. We've definitely been going for some progressions that are a little bit out of our reach and using those bands to allow us to do that. But it's all right, we're on to the next week now and we'll be deloading so we can take a little step back, take a little bit of recovery, take things easy so we're in our prime performance for that testing week in week number eight. As I said before, thank you for following along with this series. It's been really awesome interacting with you guys. If you want to interact more, as I said before, you can go to Instagram at Movement Tom. Leave a comment down below. I always respond to comments on YouTube. Give it a thumbs up and maybe a share if you find somebody or you know somebody who would benefit from this series, benefit from the program, whatever. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you next week for our deload.